solve problem on static force analysis in IC engine by analytical method. Given question, the obligate ratio of a vertical reciprocating engine is 4.5. The engine board and the crank radius are 60 mm and 40 mm respectively. The mass of the reciprocating parts is 1 kg. The difference in the gas pressure acting on the two sides of the piston is 5 bar and the effective gas pressure acts downwards towards the crankshaft when the crank has moved 50 degree from the top dead center position. Determine when the crank speed is equal to 2000 rpm. First, piston effort. Second, the load on gurgeon pin and the crank pin. Third, the cylinder wall thrust and the thrust on the crank bearing. Neglect the inertia of the connecting rod. Let us understand given data with the help of diagram. Obligate ratio N 4.5. So this is the ratio of L by R. Then the diameter board is mentioned 60 mm. Standard unit is meter. So 0 0.06 meter. Then the crank radius 40 mm. So OB is the crank and crank radius 0 0.04 meter. Mass of reciprocating parts 1 kg. So this is the piston cylinder arrangement and mass of reciprocating parts M is 1 kg. Then P1 minus P2. So this is the pressure difference is mentioned. So if we observe the piston cylinder arrangement then on one side of the piston there is the gas pressure. And this gas pressure is known as pressure P1. And on the other side of the piston, there is the atmospheric air pressure and this pressure is known as P2. So this P1 minus P2, 5 bar, standard unit is Pascal, that is 5 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Then the effective gas pressure is having downward direction. That means we can say that P1 is greater than P2 and that's why the piston is rotating reciprocating or moving in the downward direction. So I will show the movement of the piston that is in the downward direction. So acceleration is also in downward direction. Then N that is the speed of the crank 2000 rpm that is mentioned and theta 50 degree from TDC that means top dead center. Now if we observe here is the crank. So this point B initially at this point TDC. So this is the top dead center and this is the bottom dead center. And this point B initially at point TDC and it moves through an angle 50 degree. So this angle theta is equal to 50 degree and this is the position of this crank. And this AB is known as connecting rod. Now the first question we have to calculate piston effort that is F. So this is the vertical engine. So what is the formula for the vertical engine? That is F is equal to FP minus FI minus FF plus MG. Now because the mass of reciprocating parts M is mentioned in the question. So this uh, weight will act in vertically downward direction. So in this direction there is the weight and this weight is nothing but M into G. M into G. Now we will first calculate FP. So FP is the force due to gas pressure. So here is the formula P1 A1 minus P2 A2. Where A1 is the area of exposure of this gas to the piston. Now here diameter D is mentioned. So how to calculate area A1? So A1 is equal to pi by 4 D square. So D is 0 0.06 meter. So we have to put the value. Then P2 A2. So P2 is the atmospheric air. And how to calculate area A2? So A2 we have to calculate by subtracting the area of this piston rod. So what is the area of piston rod? So when the diameter small d is mentioned in the question, then we can calculate the area of piston rod that is small a. So when we calculate the small a, then a2 is equal to a1 minus the small a.
but in this case this diameter is not mentioned that means it is negligible and we have to consider here as a zero so we can say that uh, a2 is equal to a1 minus 0 that is a2 is equal to a1 and we will consider for a2 which is equal to a1 which is equal to a so i will put here instead of a2 and a1 that is a and i will take this a outside the bracket so p1 minus p2 into a so now what is p1 minus p2 phi into 10 raised to phi and what is area a so area a because this diameter is given pi by 4 into 0 0.06 square so answer is 1413.7 newton now we will calculate the inertia force now we know that the acceleration of piston is acting in the downward direction. So inertia force will always act in the opposite direction of the movement. So we have to show here the direction of Fi in the opposite direction that is in the upward direction. So this Fi, so this Fi is moving in the upward direction and that's why here the sign is used as a negative sign. That is the minus sign is used. So first we will calculate this term Fi. So Fi that is equal to mass into acceleration and which is equal to m into r omega square cos of theta plus cos of 2 theta by n. Now what is omega? So here n is mentioned in the question. So we can calculate 2 pi n divided by 60 and which is equal to omega. So omega is the angular velocity. So when we calculate this, then we will get omega 209.43. Now when we put the value, so m is 1, r is 0 0.04, omega 209.43 square and inside the bracket cos of 50 plus cos of 2 theta, that is cos of 100 divided by n, that is 4.5. So when we calculate this, then we will get the inertia force 1061.06. So this is the inertia force n that is in newton now next friction force so here friction uh, is not mentioned in the question but friction if we observe it is in the opposite direction to the movement that is it is also in the upward direction so for the friction force also we have to mention here the negative sign that is minus fa but in this case we have to consider here as a zero now plus mg so if we observe this weight always acts in the downward direction so this is the direction of the movement of this reciprocating part so we have to use here positive sign so m into g that is 1 multiplied by 9.81 so here this mg is 9.81 so how to calculate this F? So F is equal to 1413.7 minus 1061.06 minus this is 0 plus 9.81. So when we calculate this then F is equal to 362.45 Newton. Next question, load on gurdjian pin and crank pin. So gurdjian pin is located at this point A and crank pin is located at this point B. So load at these points that means we have to calculate force along this connecting rod. So as the crank rotates through an angle theta from TDC, then at the same time the connecting rod makes an angle phi with this line of action of the piston. So this is the line of action of piston that means the piston is moving along this line. So how to calculate this Fc? So for that we will first resolve this Fc into two components that is the horizontal component and vertical component. So horizontal component I will show here and vertical component. Now here in between this so this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component because this is the vertical engine. Now this component is nearby to angle phi. So how I can write this component Fc cos of phi. And this component we will write here as a Fc sin of phi. So now we have to find out this Fc. So if we observe the friction force that will act in the vertically downward direction. So if I uh, show here this friction force that is F. Then this F and this Fc cos phi are opposite to each other. 
So from this diagram I can say that F is equal to Fc cos phi. So Fc is equal to F divided by cos phi. So F that we have already calculated 362.45. Now what is the value of this angle phi? So how to calculate? So here we have to make here one construction line from this point B. We have to draw here perpendicular line on this vertical line and here point of intersection is the point D. Now there are two triangles A, B, D and O, B, D. So in this triangle A, B, D what is the value of sin phi? So sin phi is equal to B, D divided by A, B. So A, B is the length of connecting rod that is L. Now in this triangle O, B, D sin theta is equal to so sin theta is equal to B, D divided by O, B. So OB is the radius of the crank. So radius of the crank is R. So we have to put the value. So in these two formulas, if we observe this BD is common. So we can say that BD is equal to L into sin phi, which is equal to R into sin theta. So if we equate these two, then if I transfer this R, then there is L by R. And L by R that is nothing but N. So n sin phi is equal to sin theta. So sin phi is equal to sin theta that is sin 50 divided by n that is 4.5. So we can calculate this and phi is equal to 9.8 degree. So we can take here cos of 9.8 degree and answer is 367.81 Newton. Next question thrust on cylinder wall. So this is the cylinder and thrust on cylinder wall is always perpendicular to the direction of motion. So motion is along this vertical line. So this thrust always acts in this horizontal direction. And this thrust on cylinder wall is Fn. Now if we observe this diagram, this Fn and this Fc sin phi are opposite to each other. So we can say that Fn is equal to Fc sin phi. So Fc is 367.81 and sin into 9.8 which is equal to 62.60 Newton. So this is the value of Fn. Now next question thrust on crank bearing. So how to calculate this? Now we know that the force along this connecting rod is Fc. So if we extend this connecting rod at this point B then here in this direction there is the force on this connecting rod. Now we will resolve this Fc into two components that is this vertical component and horizontal component. So the one component is along this crank. So I will show here and this component is known as Fr and one component is perpendicular to this crank that is this is tangent to the motion of this crank. So we have to show that. And this component is known as Ft. Now we have to find out the value of this Fr and Ft in terms of Fc. Now if we observe here this angle is phi and this angle is theta. So in this triangle ABO this angle ABO is equal to 180 minus theta plus phi. So I will write here. So this angle ABO is equal to. I will write here 180 minus theta plus phi. So this is the angle. Now here I have extended this AB. So this is the FC. So the, what is the remaining angle? So remaining angle because this angle on one side on this horizontal line. So this is the straight horizontal line. Here is AB and this AB extended. So the remaining angle is theta plus phi. So how we can find out the value of FR? So these are the two components of FC. So FR is equal to, so this is the nearby ca component of this theta plus phi. So FR is equal to FC cos phi. So this I will write FR is equal to Fc cos theta plus phi and the remaining component is Ft. So Ft is equal to Fc sin theta plus phi. Now we have question thrust on crank bearing. 
So this FR is nothing but the thrust on the crank bearing. So we will use the formula Fc cos theta plus 5. And when we put the value then we will get the answer 185.015 Newton.